to sing, I'll go on loving you. had been trying desperately to get rid of the camel that was sent them by an Arabian prince whom they had befriended. Not only is the camel less than beautiful, but he also has a very unfortunate personality. In fact, the neighbors are threatening to make things difficult if Ozzy doesn't get rid of tall, tan, and tangy. As our scene opens, he's still phoning, trying to dispose of the prince's aromatic gifts. Hello, I have a camel here. <laughs> Hello, I have a camel here. (laughs) Hello, I have a... Well, you can wait a minute. I minus it a pair of nylons. Well, you better think of something, Ozzy. We've called the zoo, the circus, and practically every movie studio in town. Hey, wait a minute. There's still one movie studio left. Maybe this is the right place. Hello? Uh, could I speak to someone in production, please? That's right. Hello? Uh, I have a camel here, and I was wondering whether you could use him over at your studio. Oh, you do? Well, he's a really fine camel, and I'm... Sh- What's that? Oh, well, uh, thanks just the same. Goodbye. Well, what went wrong that time? They need one that's trained. Well, ours is trained. For a tap dance with Gene Kelly? <laughs> What do you think we better do about him? Well, first I think we ought to burn some old rubber and feathers in the incinerator to cover up the smell. (laughs) Boy, it certainly is oppressive around here today. And it isn't the heat or the humidity. It's a camel. How are we going to get rid of him? I wonder if we kept him locked up in there, if it would be possible for him to get so he couldn't stand himself. (laughs) No, I don't think so. I wonder if we should try to give him a rub down with mum. <laughs> Won't work. Look what happened yesterday when I tried to wash him with Life Boy. What? He ate six bars and stood out there blowing soap bubbles through his nose. I'm afraid to answer the door anymore. Every time I go, it's another neighbor complaining. You know, I've been thinking this over, and there's only one thing to do. What's that? Send the camel right back to Bazarkistan where he came from. We can write a very courteous letter, you know. Dear Prince, thanks for the gift, but we just can't handle it. By golly, I think you're right. You know, he seemed like such an intelligent guy, I can't imagine him sending us a camel. It's really your turn, but I'll get it. Let's face it together, dear. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. and Mrs. Ozzie Nelson? Well, that depends. The Mr. and Mrs. Ozzie Nelson who received the gift of a camel from... Oh, yes, this is the plane. <laughs> Well, what can we do for you? Well, my name is Monroe, Thomas Jefferson Monroe, with the State Department, Washington, D.C. Oh, won't you come in? Thanks. 
<laughs> we received the camel from Prince Ali Magaga of Bazarkistan, Arabia. Splendid, Mr. Nelson, splendid. It was with great pleasure that we heard that you were honored by this gift from the prince. Uh, what is your interest in the camel, Mr. Monroe? Well, we of the State Department are always greatly pleased at an expression of goodwill between another country and ours. Such little matters go a long way towards strengthening and cementing deeper relationships between nations. Therefore, it is with great satisfaction that I take note of the fact that with this camel, friendships have become, I might say, uh, 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 ripened. You might even say over-ripened. <laughs> I'm sure the prince sent you a fine animal. Well, you better go out and take a look now if you want to see him, because I'm shipping him back to Ali Magaga today. You're doing What? Mr. Nelson, you don't know what you're saying. You can't ship that camel back. That would constitute an insult of the greatest proportion. Please, Mr. Nelson. Oh, I'm sorry, but I have to. <laughs> can't keep him here. We've had nothing but complaints ever since he arrived. You mean the neighbors? Not only the neighbors. We got a call from a flower shop in Glendale that 200 petunias had curled up and died. <laughs> well, I hate to apply pressure, Mr. Nelson. But as a representative of the State Department, I must appeal to your patriotism. I must insist that you reconsider. You mean we have to keep the camel? But of course. The prince would be horribly offended if you got rid of the animal. But we're offended now, constantly. This is the same thing as asking us to move. Mr. Nelson, I'm sure you wouldn't want to do anything that might lead to international complications. Well, I can't believe it'd make that difference. Frankly, I'm from Missouri. Oh, you are from Missouri? In that case, maybe something can be done about it at the White House. <laughs> In the meantime, don't get rid of that camel. Oh, Harriet, this is the worst mess I've ever been in. The State Department won't let me send the camel back, and the police and the neighbors refuse to let me keep it. Like having your pants catch on fire in front of the YWCA. Well, the only thing left to do is try and bluff it out, you know that? Let's just pretend we haven't got any camel around here, no matter what the neighbors say. Well, we can try, I suppose. Oh. Oh, look, here comes Mrs. Broadstreet up the walk, and she looks awfully mad. Well, just stick to our story. We don't have a camel. I've stood for a lot of things from neighbors in my time, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson. But you've just got to get rid of that camel. Camel? Yes, that camel of yours has got to go. Oh, you must be mistaken, Mrs. Broadstreet. We have no camel here. All Mrs. Nelson and I have are two sons. Then the one with the long tail just ate all the wash. <laughs> the wash off my line. It was simply disgraceful. And don't tell me it wasn't a camel. I saw with my own eyes what was chasing me. He was chasing you? That's what I said. He chased me around and around my victory garden until he knocked me flat on my Brussels sprouts. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if he did any damage. Any damage? Why, at the clothesline alone, he ate two of my newest dresses, my favorite slip, three pairs of stockings, and then... And then... What's the matter? What did he eat then? I had saved it all through the war. It was such wonderful rubber. And it never crept up or fell down. <laughs> there, there, there now. Now that that's gone, I, I can't get into my clothes. And my husband's going to start calling me fat so I guess. Oh, my. I'm terribly sorry. So am I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, golly. Has she gone, Harriet? Oh, my turn. Oh, uh, remember me? I'm the delivery man. I brought you that camel yesterday. Believe me, friend, we'll never forget you. Uh, well, uh, just answer one question. Do you still have the camel? Yes, I'm afraid we do. Oh, what a relief. It seems they made a mistake at the transfer company, and the camel ain't for you. Then, then this camel isn't a gift from Arabia? Oh, yeah, yeah, but they got the tag switched. You see, he's supposed to go to the California Zoological Society in Sacramento. 
Well, brother, that's the best news we've had in weeks. He's right out in the garage, and the sooner you take him, the better. Oh, boy, that's fine. Uh, how do I get to the garage, huh? Just step outside and follow your nose. <laughs> How about that? The camel wasn't for us after all. I thought a camel was an awful strange sort of a gift. Hey, but wait a minute, Ozzy. Now we're right back where we started. If the camel was for somebody else, I'm wondering what the prince sent us. Well, we'll find out. You know that. something? Maybe it's a ruby after all. Oh, that's silly. Are you kidding? After a camel, anything's possible. Well, you remember what my first guess was? A beautiful Arabian dancing girl. <laughs> oh, sure. I can just picture the expression on your face if you heard a knock on the door and you opened it and there stood an Arabian dancing girl. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you are silly. Listen. It... Was that you? No. Well, open the door, will you, dear? Ah, good afternoon, Saim. Greetings from Arabia. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Ozzy. Say something. Well, I, 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 I. I... and Harriet will be back in a moment. Meantime, a friendly suggestion to you who will soon be picking out the pattern for your family silver. A great favorite with the women who have seen it and one of the loveliest patterns that International Sterling has ever created is Enchantress. It's a pattern that uses both modern and romantic design and blends them perfectly. The handle of Enchantress is a clear, lustrous panel of silver. The ornament, tiny sprays of flowers down the length of each side. You'll like Enchantress. You'll like the way it dresses up a simple table or harmonizes with the more lavish one. You'll like the fact that you can start a service of this beautiful international sterling so very reasonably. A single place setting of six pieces costs under $23. Why not visit your silverware dealer tomorrow, the one who carries a display of international sterling silver in his window? Then you can see Enchantress for yourself and learn how easily this beautiful solid silver can be yours. The pattern is Enchantress. The creator's International Sterling. And now back to Ozzy and Harriet. Oh, this is a very lovely place you have here, Saeed. Oh, thank you. Would you like some more tea and cookies? Yes, thank you. They're very good. So you certainly speak good English. Where were you born? North Hollywood. <laughs> North Hollywood? But weren't you sent here by Prince Alamagagi of Bazakistan, Arabia? Oh, my goodness, no. Well, then why are you wearing that Arabian dancing costume? Oh, oh, I'm so glad you finally asked me that. I wasn't allowed to tell you until you did. You see, I'm being initiated into a sorority at UCLA. <laughs> International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, invite you to listen again next Sunday to The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet with songs by the King Sisters and music by Ozzie Nelson's Orchestra. Oh, Ozzie! Ozzie, I have the most exciting news. What is it, Harriet? The gift arrived, and it's the most beautiful gift in the world. Well, what is it? Oh, I won't have to tell you. I'll just read the card. It says... Even in far-off Arabia, we know that the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is international sterling. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the Columbia Broadcasting System and is also broadcast over the Trans-Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzie and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Vern Smith speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.